This is an overview of in situ adaptive tabulation. We may have a function such as y equals f of x that we want to try to approximate. Let's say this is our function here. This is y uh, as a function of x1 and maybe x2. Okay, so we have input dimensions um, of r, in this case n equals 2, and then output dimensions uh, y is in the real vector space p, well, or p is um, equal to 1. Okay, so you have two inputs and one input output that you're trying to approximate. Now in situ, adapt, uh, in situ adaptive tabulation works by uh, dividing up the nonlinear surface into multiple linear regions and then controlling the accuracy of the approximation. So in a scenario, let's just go ahead and start with scenario 3. We have a ISAT record here, and we have a new point that's requested uh, here. So it looks for if, if this is going to be within the region of accuracy. If it's outside that region, it's going to go ahead and create a new region. And if the region cannot be expanded, it's going to go ahead and create this new record right here with an ellipsoid that bounds the air. Okay, and then uh, if it is um, outside that region, but it finds that we have a suitable approximation, it can grow the ellipsoid to include uh, a larger region where the accuracy is deemed acceptable. Now, if you are inside, if this is your query point here, and you are inside uh, the accuracy region defined by that ellipsoid, then it just does a retrieval and returns that. Okay, so this was originally developed for turbulent combustion simulations where the, uh, the underlying reaction kinetics uh, were called many times and it slowed down the simulation. And so this is an approximation to speed up uh, direct numerical simulations of turbulent reacting flows. It's since been generalized to more uh, this more general case where you can have any nonlinear system, and then you have your ISAT approximation. There is additional information here if you want to go and get a more detailed overview of the ISAT algorithm and how it works. So it's kind of like a neural network in the sense that it does a nonlinear approximation, but unlike a neural network, it builds the approximation adaptively as you go and so it has only the data that you're going to be accessing it uses that uh, to build your approximation now there's source code here available if you'd like to access that uh, just come to uh, this page right here now uh, that's kind of a long page so I'll just show you how to navigate to that uh, just go to apm.byu.edu and then select the uh, the prism link up top and then that's going to bring you to uh, the research website. And here under past projects, this is in situ adaptive tabulation. Okay, so there's a source code there. There's just an animation here of how the storage and retrieval works. And I'll include this video there as well. But it's in uh, Fortran if you need something fast uh, or MATLAB as well. And then this just shows an overview of ISAT in progress, in, in action, so it has that original nonlinear function, and as your accuracy level uh, request decreases, then it becomes more linear uh, approximations that, are, that approximate that nonlinear function. Okay, so you can see there, uh, as we start very accurate, has many ISAT records, but then as it, the accuracy decreases, okay, so you can see the accuracy kind of counting up there, um, the accuracy decreases, then there's more uh, linear, fewer uh, linear approximations, a more coarse approximation to the nonlinear function. Okay, so that's an, that's an overview of ISAT. Again, the uh, retrieval, growth, and addition. And then there are some references here. The original reference by uh, Stephen Pope, and then a few others that I've produced as well about ISAT. And uh, okay, so that's an overview of ISAT. Uh, just go ahead and let me know if you have any questions about the algorithm or how to apply it. And I'd be glad to give you 
uh, some insights on, on how it works.